Hey, this is Charles Onyad with IGN Xbox, and uh, I'm here to review Oblivion. Now, this is a huge game, especially on the Xbox 360, because it's been experiencing somewhat of a, a dearth of games recently, although that's picked up this month. And uh, with Oblivion, it represents the first role-playing game on the system. For PC, it also represents the continuation of an already huge role-playing franchise. So this is a big release in many ways, and uh, the game is able to pull off a lot of what it tried to do very well. There's a couple of improvements in this version of The Elder Scrolls. Uh, first and foremost, you've got fast traveling, you've got a new map system, and you've got an improved quest log. Now, with the new map system, basically what it allows you to do is any location in the game, assuming you've discovered it by traveling there and towns are immediately accessible through this, uh, you can just pull up an icon on the map, click on it, and you'll instantly be transported there. That means there's no more needless time wasting walking around. Of course, you can still do that because a big part of the Elder Scrolls series is just exploring wherever you want to, but when you really want to complete a quest, when you want to do a bunch of things right after the other, it's just really convenient, it's a great feature, and uh, it's something you're definitely going to enjoy. In terms of the gameplay, you've got a ton of quests you can do, lots of options, that's part of what makes the game great. You've got a better combat system, although the combat system still isn't perfect. If you're in any of the group fights, which happens a lot of time, either you're fighting a lot of enemies or you're fighting with uh, some friendly NPCs, you're going to have some difficulty as to where your weapon is actually contacting, so a lot of times you accidentally hit an NPC and they'll start attacking you during the fight, and that's just not something you want. It just doesn't feel like you're really hitting the, the other guy, and I know that's more an action game thing, but still, it'd, it'd be nice to see, and it's something that could really be improved upon here. In addition to the multitude of quests, there's also the Radiant AI system. Now, this affects all the NPCs in the game, how something they behave. They all go through daily routines and that sort of thing, and you can witness this. You'll see people sitting down to have dinner. You'll see NPCs wandering around town, engaging in random conversations with each other, and that really lends to the sense of uh, believability of Oblivion's world. So the land really comes alive with all these different NPC interactions. And by the same token, every time you talk to them, they'll usually have something unique to say, although they're, they're stock comments and spread throughout the world, but they'll comment on Go rumors ahead, about please. what's going on based on what sort of actions hey, you've taken. All the, the quest lines in the game have their own sort of story Archie, associated with the them, so they'll, regardless of how insignificant a task you're doing, city. it's still going to have sort of a mythos around it, so everything stays interesting that way. And this is good, considering a lot of the quests just turn into a dungeon crawl sort of thing, especially when you. you go through the Oblivion Gates, which pop up sort of randomly around Cyrodiil. You go through, and they look cool when you first go in, but they eventually turn into the same thing over and over again. You generally fight the same enemies, encounter the same sorts of architecture and that sort of thing. So that kind of gets a little old, but still the fact that there's the storyline surrounding everything uh, helps keep it fresh and, and keeps you interested. Obviously a big point of interest are the graphics, especially with a game like this that's gotten so much attention over the years. It's been in development for quite a long time. And as it's come out, they look great, the graphics do, uh, especially standing still and in uh, small rooms where it's enclosed indoor space, dungeons, uh, sealed off areas, that sort of thing. The frame rate stays steady. Textures are great, lighting's amazing, armor and uh, weapon detail is just awesome. But unfortunately, when you're running across the overworld map, you're going to experience some hitches in frame rate. It's going to drop down noticeably. And also, you're going to get game stutters whenever now loading screens crop up to uh, load new grass and textures on the ground. Uh, you're going to see this on the Xbox 360 version for sure. Uh, you're going to see this on mid to low level PCs. Uh, if you have a high level PC, you're definitely going to have a better experience graphically because obviously you're not, well, you have more power, so you're not going to experience the frame rate drops as much, and uh, a lot of the stutters on high-end PC systems when uh, it loads in new textures just don't exist. Along with the graphical glitches, you're not going to really experience Oblivion without experiencing some bugs. Uh, on the Xbox 360 version, the game will crash uh, during loading screens sometimes, not, not all that frequently and not enough to really hamper gameplay, but it's going to happen. Uh, you're going to experience maybe fighting an invisible monster once or twice. I know that happened to me talking to an invisible NPC. Granted, these are NPCs and monsters that are not supposed to be invisible. On the PC, the game's going to crash to desktop. It's safe to say that the game is not uh, perfectly designed from that standpoint. Also, some people have had problems with the auto-leveling system, but for me, eh, it doesn't really bother me. Oblivion's sound is absolutely awesome. Uh, the, the string music is great, uh, great overworld themes for just adventuring around wherever, great dungeon themes. It's actually scary when you go down into some of them and you're fighting vampires and there's this crazy string music going on in the background. The character voices for the most part are, are really strong, although they do verge into cheesy in some cases. 
but uh, just the amount of voice work that's in the game is is awesome. It's all over, Lawbreaker. Your spree is at an end. Okay. Spell effects and weapon clangs are all very crisp and clean. Really get you into the sort of the adventuring spirit, so to speak. And overall, you know, taking into account the graphical glitches and the bugs in the game, it's still a lot of fun to play. It's not going to completely ruin your experience unless you're just a total nitpicker for that sort of thing. This is still pretty much the best experience you can have on your Xbox 360. And for the PC, we haven't seen a single player role playing experience as good as this in a long time.